Claire said, I'm the chapter liaison for Youth Ending Slavery. And as a completely youth-led nonprofit, youth activism is at the center of YES's mission. We believe that we are a vital force in the fight against human trafficking, not in spite of our age, but because of it. The adolescent community is passionate, bright, motivated, and powerful. One of the central ways that we incorporate youth into our mission is through our chapter system. Chapters are run by students at their respective high schools who believe passionately in our mission and like, would like to incorporate it into their local communities. We currently have chapters at Lincoln, Marist, Forest Grove, University of Puget Sound, and so many others. We are hoping that as YES develops, our chapter base can spread further and further into the local and national adolescent community. Because as our, impact, as our chapters grow, our impact grows with it. I would like to encourage you to check out our chapter table after the walk to see what our chapters have been up to in the past year and what they hope to accomplish in the year to come. And if you're interested in starting a chapter, you can pick up a chapter application or talk to me because I'd love to make that happen. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, um, I'm Katie Foley. I'm Youth Ending Slavery's Director of Outreach. This position gives me the privilege of working with many of our dedicated partners, some of whom are here, to, some of whom are here today. Um, local schools, I get to write the newsletter, and also the best part about this is that I get to work with all of you, our supporters. When I first learned about the crime of human trafficking, I was horrified in the face of such large global and local issues. Reading and hearing the stories of these atrocities, I knew that I wanted to help, but I didn't understand how, as one person, I could do this. When I first learned about YES, it was a pivotal moment for me. I realized my concerns and willingness to take action were echoed by many others. Looking around here today at all of you, I am so inspired to recognize and feel your empathy. You are here today on a Saturday afternoon when you could be doing just about anything else because you are activists. This trait allows you to re empathize and sympathize with marginalized people such as victims of human trafficking. And because of your strength and moral compasses, you are here today fighting for their justice. That kind of empathy and that kind of activism reinforces my faith in justice every day. Thank you for this. Hello, my name is Natalie Bojarski and I'm the treasurer for Youth Ending Slavery. Community involvement is key in living out Youth Ending Slavery's mission because in order to raise awareness about human trafficking, we need help from all of you. The most important way that you can help Yes's cause is by spreading the word about modern day slavery because awareness is the first step to change. You can also help by consuming with care. On our website, we have a series of informative websites um, that can help educate readers about the importance of fair trade, B corporations, and how to shop ethically. Another way to get involved is to subscribe to our monthly newsletter. Here, we write about important and relevant human trafficking related um, issues. You can also help YES by donating so that we can put on events and fundraise for organizations that work directly with victims. Thank you all so much for your support. Hello, my name is Emma Christensen. I'm the event planner for Youth Ending Slavery. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming to our walk and for continuing to support us in our battle to end human trafficking. I am very excited for YES this year because of all the exciting events we are working on that are in line with our mission. And this walk is just the first of many events to come. In November, we are partnering with the YES Foundation to put on a youth-led legislative um, concept forum. We are also planning an exhibition that explores slavery in its past, present, and future forms. Our second annual 5K run, like the one we put on last year with our Forest Grove chapter, is going to take place this spring. Besides these events, we are currently beginning the groundwork on a new event that is projected to take place next spring. We are planning an art-based event that connects creativity with social change. These events take months of planning and would not be possible if it weren't for all of you, our supporters. I'd like to thank you again for coming and we hope to see you at our future events. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speaker, Wynne 
Um, Wynn is the executive director and founder of FAST, Fight Against Sex Trafficking, and, al and was also the executive director of Oath, Oregonians Against Trafficking Humans. During the past six years, she has traveled throughout Oregon raising awareness about human trafficking and testifying at many government hearings. She was nominated for the Portland Peace Prize in 2012 for her work against fight for her work fighting this atrocity. On top of all of this, Wynne has led a free series on human trafficking at Kells Irish Pub for seven years that has been co-sponsored by various political figures such as Senator Ron Wyden and Labor Commissioner Brad Avakian. In late 2011, Wynne decided to run for state legislator and formed her own and formed her new organization, which was able to speak out politically, FAST. The purpose of FAST is to promote and network the great organizations working for this cause, and to promote candidates and legislation, and to empower people who want to make a difference. Here she is to speak to you all today. Give it up for Win, everybody. Okay, what is this organization called? Yes. Youth Ending Slavery, and it's yes? Yes? Yes! Come on! Yes! Okay, you guys are the ones that are going to make a difference, and it gives me chills. I've worked with different clubs throughout. We, when I was executive director for Oath, we had clubs in about 12 colleges and 10 high schools and one middle school, and you're the ones that are going to make a difference. You're not going to put up with this baloney anymore. Part of the problem is it's misogyny. Does everybody know what misogyny is? Yeah. That's yeah. where you look down on women and you don't think of them as being equal. When men see women as being less than them, it makes them feel they have a right. And we know that's not true. And I've, I've got to tell you, you guys, you have to be a peer to other guys. You need to make a difference. You need to step up. You need to tell the guys, this is not right. This is not acceptable. And I can tell you there's a great organization in town here called EPIC, E-P-I-K. It stands for Every Man Protecting Innocent Kids. You can find their website is epicproject.org and it's led by Thomas Perez. They're working with the police, trying to find people who are soliciting girls online, they're doing all sorts of things to help this cause, and we need the men to step, step up. I started knowing about this in 2006, and I heard about it, met some people. By 2008, I'm sorry it took me so long, I decided I had to do something about it. I asked uh, City Club if I could do a presentation on human trafficking, and they said, well, nobody's interested in that. I asked them if they would do it. So then I got on the committee, <laughs> <laughs> and said, do you care if I do it? And they said, go ahead. And I started my uh, series at Kells Irish Pub in January of 2009. And from that, I probably had, oh, I'd say 30, 40 meetings so far with leaders from different organizations, police, FBI, all sorts of people. I also, for the last five years, have ran the U of O class on human trafficking. And I'm very honored. I have about, uh, this last year I had 17 different speakers come in and talk. Three of them were former survivors, or are survivors, not former survivors. Um, this coming October 19th at Kells Irish Pub, I have J.R. Ujafusa, who's the Multnomah County DA, who actually had a pimp sentenced for life. And Chuck Lovell, who is the sergeant over the Portland Police Sex Trafficking Unit. So anyone can come, there's no age limit, it's free and open to everybody. So just show up upstairs at Kells Irish Pub. Did you know that sex, excuse me, human trafficking is the second fastest growing crime in the world? They consider it to be worth about $32.5 billion. Is that billion? No, million dollars. Must be million, yeah. Anyway, it's a... Uh, might be billion, isn't that awful? I'm forgetting all my statistics. And you look across the world, and usually when you talk about human trafficking here in the United States, you think, oh, it's people coming in from overseas. It's not. Across the U.S., it's calculated that about 150,000 of our own 
mostly girls, are being trafficked. These are girls who have ran away from home. They were already had problems at home. They ran away within 48 hours. They're usually contacted by a pimp. He comes on as someone who loves her, cares for her, takes her under his wing, and before long, they become what they call a gorilla pimp. So initially, she thinks she's loved. She's finally accepted. She finally has someone who understands her. And then when he starts being mean, she'll do anything to get that love back. And that's where she ends up on the street. So there, I know, I personally know probably eight or nine survivors here in the Portland area, girls that came from Portland or Eugene. In fact, one of the girls that talks at my class met her boyfriend at Taylor's, right across the street from U of O. She was a university of, she was going to University of Oregon. And she's one of my speakers at my class at U of O. But another girl I know that grew up here, she was four years old when she was molested by three neighborhood boys. And she didn't know any different, she didn't know what sex was at that age. And then later on her, her dad died and her uncle died who was living with them. And she was so devastated, she became promiscuous. She was about 15 at the time. And then she finally ran, she ran into a guy, she was also working at a restaurant, and um, one of her steady customers told her, why are you doing it for free when you can get paid for it? So she went with him, he prostituted her all up and down the West Coast, even over to Hawaii. One of her memories is being at an ABC store in Hawaii, and this 14-year-old girl came in and said she had chose. What that means is she had switched her pimp. And she backed away. She knew that girl was in danger. And from what she knows, she's the last person that saw her besides her old pimp. She was killed. Um, later, this was Jessica, a really wonderful lady. Um, Jessica was being prostituted in Waikiki and one of the trips she went on was to a hotel room and it turned out to be a gang rape. And they beat her and they tied her up and they put her in the closet. And she doesn't know how long, much longer later she woke up and she didn't hear any noise so she broke loose. And she literally ran down the streets of Waikiki totally naked and nobody tried to stop her, nobody asked her if she needed any help. She ran back to her pimp. She realized he couldn't protect her. He always, she always thought of him as being her protector. She realized then he could not protect her. So she ended up getting out of the life. The guy was still looking for her for two years. Um, she finally, like I said, she did get out of the life. She, she, she's just a wonderful lady. Does anybody here know Jessica Richardson, who I'm talking about? She was one of our first, speakers that came out in 2009 about her past life. Anyway, uh, she met a guy who was a virgin and they got engaged and she felt like she finally had to tell him, you know, what her past history was and he said he already knew and she just thought God had such a, such a sense of humor to match her with a virgin. <laughs> but she said it was harder for him to get over his addiction to pornography than it was for her to get out of the life. Anyway, they ended up having four kids and they actually adopted a girl off the streets who was 15. She's one of my heroes. I gotta tell you, just talking about her gives me chills. She's wonderful. Uh, they've moved to Texas now. It, it just, for a long time, she was a main speaker at a lot of events. I used to put on conferences too. And it, it's just overwhelming sometimes and they have to get away and start a new life. And so she did. There is labor trafficking here in Oregon too. Have you guys seen the Thai food, Thai food factory down two blocks? There's a little, um, you know, those outdoor stands where you buy food, cart, food cart. Those were the head chefs at Typhoon Restaurant. Remember Typhoon Restaurant? They had two cases of human trafficking. In fact, if you go to the uh, website called notforsalecampaign.org, It'll show you where all 
the cases are of labor trafficking or human trafficking, and these are not ones that were just charged, these are ones that were proven. Well, these two chefs had been maybe not totally human trafficked, but they had been not paid well. Uh, Brad Avakian helped them file a suit, and they won. And now they have their own business down here, so I go have lunch with them whenever I can, and I put it on Facebook, too. They're just great people. Some of the things, if you're wondering about Portland area, there was a four-year study done here, and there are no statistics, I gotta tell you, because I worked for law enforcement. There are no statistics for human trafficking, although I think Senator Wyden, when they reenacted or kept the trafficking legislation going, trafficking in humans legislation at the federal level, they now included a clause to put in the FBI statistics a code for human trafficking. They had prostitution, they even had um, homosexual sex, but they didn't have human trafficking. So now hopefully all the different police departments will start keeping track of it. But what happened here, we they worked with DHS and the police and tried to get statistics for just the Portland area and they came up with 469 girls and I think maybe one boy over a four, no, no boys, I take that back, 469 girls over a four year period. And the youngest one was eight. Is that disgusting? Say yes. yes. Okay. What is nice is I've worked with people from other countries have come here and I would get them together with our local police and our organizations and our DA's office and talk to them about human tra trafficking. This was through World Affairs Council. They wanted to talk about human trafficking. People from India told us we are doing here more here in the Oregon area than any other place they visited in the United States. Here people work together. The police and the organizations are working together. The organizations work together. There's not the competition. So I want to tell you, you're very fortunate you're here and you're making a difference and I love it. So please keep it up. So, from now on, are we going to help make more people aware? Yes! yes. I need the hand movement too. Okay. Are you going to tell at least one person a week about human trafficking? Yes. yes! Are you going to do something significant, whatever it is, in this next year to make a difference? Yes! yes. Okay, come on up and let's start the walk.